With permission, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to make a statement about the Metropolitan Police Service following the decision yesterday of Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary to place the service in the engage process, which has been described as a form of special measures. The public put their trust in the police and have every right to expect the country's largest force to protect them effectively and carry out their duties to the very highest professional standards. Madam Deputy Speaker, the public also elected a mayor to bring governance and accountability in their name. And I now expect the Mayor of London, as the Police and Crime Commissioner, to act sw swiftly to ensure that he and the force deliver improvements, win back public trust and make London streets safer. We expect him to provide an urgent update explaining how he plans to fix this as soon as possible. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, is not the time for the Mayor to distance himself from the Met. He must, he must lean in and share responsibility for a failure of governance and the work needed to put it right. By contrast, as many Londoners will attest, the Mayor has been asleep at the wheel and is letting the city down. The Mayor must acknowledge that he has profound questions to answer. He cannot be passive and continue as he has. He must get a grip. All of this, I'm afraid, has undermined public confidence in the Met Police Service, and we have not heard enough from the Mayor about what he plans to do about it. Blaming everybody else will just not do will just not do this time. As I have already said, I'm glad the honourable members find this amusing. It, it absolutely I'm afraid, Madam Speaker, it is not funny. As I have already said, it's vital that policing gets the basics right and that there is proper accountability for those in charge. The Mayor of London, supported by his Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime, a role I once held, had the privilege to hold, is directly responsible for holding the Commissioner and the Met Police to account. The Mayor, I am afraid, Madam Deputy Speaker, notwithstanding what opposite, uh, members on the opposite side think, needs to raise his game. Yeah. He, has, he has an awesome responsibility which he has hitherto neglected, in my view. I am grateful to the Inspector for its work. In our force to the Met Police and to the Mayor of London to make things right. Madam Deputy Speaker, I am deeply disappointed with the Minister who shared his statement, which included none of the political attacks on the Mayor of London. The statement that we were sent was much shorter. Every single political attack on the Mayor of London was not in our statement, which is very bad form, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm sure you would agree, and not how things should be done. Order, I would just interrupt the Honourable Lady to say um, it is unusual for a different... I also have a slightly different statement, and um, it is expected that the opposition should have the statement which is actually given, just a reminder for future reference. Sarah Jones. Thank you, um, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, well, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is the case that I made amendments uh, to the statement, and I apologise that they were I apologise that were made at the last minute. But the reason is because I. The reason is uh, because I held the job of Deputy Mayor for Policing uh, myself for four years. Um, I feel very strongly about this issue, so I apologise to you. And I I thank, uh, point of order, Yvette Cooper. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Policing Minister told the House that he had only added the several paragraphs launching a political attack in quotes, at the last minute, and paragraphs that were not included in the statement that either you, Madam Deputy Speaker, or the Home Office front bench were given. However, the list of questions that was circulated to Conservative backbenchers, which I have here, that will have taken some time to prepare and to circulate with input from the Home Office, repeats the same script that the policing minister has used in his attack. And in fact, those questions include nothing on the actual failings in the Metropolitan Police, nothing on the reforms that are needed to the Metropolitan Police or to policing across the country, only political attacks instead. It is not credible that these political paragraphs were only, and I quote, 
added at the last minute? Did the policing minister give inaccurate information? Further to that point of order, Minister. It's certainly the case that the uh, statement was moving with some fluidity over the last uh, hour or so. I am sorry if it didn't make it through in its completed terms. I did add a, a number of, of items myself at the end. And it should come as no surprise uh, that the uh, approach in the state was being discussed between us and special advisers. Uh, in future, Madam Deputy Speaker, if there are late changes, I undertake that I will issue a late version of the, the statement that includes all of my remarks. I wonder, Madam Deputy Speaker, whether you might have a word with, the speaker, with Mr Speaker about this issue, because I believe that exactly the same process happened in another statement last week, where the Transport Secretary did, um, added a whole load of stuff at the last minute, which was then regurgitated in lots of backbench um, Conservative members' questions to the House. So it was clearly intended, long before it ended up coming to the House, that there was going to be a different statement made in the House than the one that was given to the Opposition, and for that matter, was subsequently circulated around the House.